let's start with Diego Sanchez versus Michelle Pereira at UFC Fight Night 167. This fight was intense until it took a surprising turn. Pereira, known for his flashy style, was in control, using spinning kicks and acrobatic moves that left Sanchez struggling. But everything changed in the third round. Another body shot oh, I Here. Oh, oh, he sits him down. Oh, oh. he was on the ground. In a, in, a t in a time called here. In the third round, Pereira landed a knee to Sanchez's head while he was down on one knee. That's against the rules. Sanchez, hurt and bleeding, staggered back, and the referee stopped the fight immediately. Here's where it gets interesting. Sanchez, clearly in pain, asked the referee if he would win if he couldn't continue. The ref said yes, so Sanchez decided to stop the fight. The crowd was shocked. Some people cheered, thinking it was a smart move, while others booed, feeling disappointed by the sudden end. Sanchez won by disqualification. Pereira, who had been dominating, lost because of one mistake. This fight shows how unpredictable the UFC can be, where one wrong move can change everything. Next, let's talk about a fight from UFC 1 in 1993, Gerard Gordeaux versus Taylor Tuli. This was one of the very first UFC fights, and it was over in just 26 seconds. Gordeaux, a kickboxer, faced Tuli, a sumo wrestler. The size difference was huge, but Gordeaux had a plan. Right at the start, Gordeaux kicked Tuli in the face, knocking out one of his teeth. The tooth flew out of the octagon. Tuli fell to the ground, and the referee stopped the fight immediately. Gordeaux won the fight, and Tuli's tooth became a part of UFC history. This fight showed how unpredictable and wild UFC can be, even from the very beginning. What do you think about this crazy fight? Let us know in the comments. Next up, we have Emmanuel Yarborough versus Keith Hackney at UFC 3. This fight is famous because of the huge size difference between the fighters. Yarborough was a sumo wrestler weighing over 600 pounds, while Hackney was much smaller at around 200 pounds. It looked like David versus Goliath in the octagon. When the fight started, Yarborough used his size to push Hackney into the cage, trying to crush him with his weight. But Hackney was quick and smart. He dodged and moved around, avoiding the full force of Yarborough's attacks. Hackney used his fists to punch Yarborough repeatedly, focusing on his head. Despite the size difference, Hackney's punches were strong and precise. Hackney's plan was to wear Yarborough down. Yarborough tried to grab Hackney several times, but Hackney always escaped. Finally, after many punches, Yarborough couldn't take it anymore. The referee stepped in and stopped the fight. Hackney won by TKO, showing that speed and strategy can beat even the biggest opponents. This happened very early on in the fight. Emmanuel gets hit with his first punch, goes down. Let's go to a replay right here. Here is Keith just teeing off. Emmanuel is virtually helpless. Now he goes down to the ground. He's going to try to withstand the pain, but he's simply in an environment he's not used to being in. Yeah. Now let's talk about Ryan Hall versus Gray Maynard at the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale. This fight was unusual because of Ryan Hall's unique fighting style. Hall is a master of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he loves using leg locks. From the start, Hall kept trying to grab Maynard's legs, aiming to submit him with a leg lock. Maynard, a seasoned wrestler, got really frustrated. Hall's constant rolling and diving for leg locks made it hard for Maynard to get any punches in. Maynard spent most of the fight trying to escape Hall's tricky moves. The audience was also confused and frustrated, as they were expecting a more traditional fight. Despite the strange tactics, Hall's plan worked. He controlled the fight by keeping Maynard on the defensive. In the end, Hall won by unanimous decision, proving that his unique style can be very effective, even if it looks odd. What do you think about Hall's unusual style? At least try to land one of those kicks. He missed on the bulk of them. But do something to get the judges to focus more on Ryan. Finally, let's talk about Caleb Starnes versus Nate Quarry at UFC 83. This fight is infamous for how Caleb Starnes fought. Instead of engaging with Quarry, Starnes spent most of the fight running away. It was clear early on that Starnes was avoiding any real confrontation, which left everyone confused and frustrated. Quarry, realizing what was happening, decided to mock Starnes. He exaggerated his own movements, running around the octagon in a funny way to show how Starnes was acting. The crowd found this hilarious, but they were also disappointed because they wanted to see a real fight. Despite Starnes' strange behavior, the fight continued until the end. Quarry won by unanimous decision, but the fight is remembered more for Quarry's taunting than any actual fighting. What do you think about this unusual fight? Was Starnes' strategy smart or just disappointing? Which one did you find the worst? Comment below.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more MMA content. Until next time, keep your guard up and your hands ready.